Did you know that the M6 Mark II is the first and only EOS M camera by the recording of this video, that is, that supports UHS-2 memory cards? But what is the difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2 memory cards? And do you actually need a UHS-2 memory card in the M6 Mark II? Let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Roger, and on this channel we talk about cameras, tech gear, and videography. And sometimes photography. And during this video, if you like it, please hit that thumbs up button down below. That would really be appreciated. And while you're down there, please consider hitting that subscribe button too. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about SD cards and how to understand the markings on the different cards. We're also going to take a look at the different codecs in the M6 Mark II and what kind of requirements that sets to the SD card and from that going to determine if you actually need a UHS-2 SD card in this camera. Now I'm that old that when I was 18 years old and traveled abroad for the first time ever on a vacation we still bought these one-time cameras or disposable cameras to photograph and collect memories from that trip. Now these cameras had film inside of them and we needed to go to a photoshop to get these photos developed. Nowadays instead of film we have gone digital and the photos that we take are stored in memory cards like this. Different cameras demand different kind of memory cards. Depending on how powerful or what kind of specs your camera has different demands are set to the memory card to be able to utilize the features inside of your camera. 4K recording captures more information than 1080p does and cameras filming in 10-bit 422 captures a lot more information than cameras filming in 8-bit 420. Now, if you don't know the difference between 10-bit, 8-bit, 420 and 422, please take a look at this video or playlist up here. Now, more information recorded by the camera demands a bigger storage capacity in the memory card but it also demands that more information is written from the camera to the memory card in a faster speed. Now I only use SanDisk Extreme Pro memory cards. I find these very reliable and I've never had any issues with them. This is a UHS-1 memory card and this is a UHS-2 memory card. First, UHS stands for Ultra High Speed. The easiest way to tell the difference between UHS-1 and UHS-2 is to turn the card around. If we take these two cards and flip them over, you see there is a second row of pins on the UHS-2 card. These are there to be able to write and read bigger amounts of information to and from the card. If we turn them back, the big number printed on the front indicates how much storage capacity is in the card. Both of these two cards have a storage capacity of 128 gigabytes. The second number written on the card is the highest sustainable read speed of the card. Now read speed is the speed information is read off the card by your computer. The read speed number isn't that important when it comes to matching the SD card to your camera. This number only matters when files are transferred from the memory card to a computer. To transfer files from the card you need a card reader. And the speed files are transferred of the card depends on what type of card reader you have. For UHS-2 SD cards you need a UHS-2 card reader to be able to transfer as fast as intended. And a UHS-2 card reader will transfer files faster than a UHS-1 card reader. The read speed number is normally set as megabytes per second, which has a capital B. In fact, all the numbers indicated in the SD card is set as megabytes per second. While the different codecs inside of your camera, they're actually listed as megabits per second with a small b and there are eight bits in one byte. This is important to remember later on when we want to see how much write speed is required by the memory card to utilize the writing capacity of the camera. 
The naming of the SD card also indicates the capability of the card. The common name is SD card. Now SD stands for Secure Digital, but different cards has different names. We have SD, SDHC, and SDXC. A standard SD card has a max capacity of 2 GB storage. SDHC cards has a capacity of 4 up to 32 GB. And SDXC cards has a capacity of 64 all the way up to 2 terabytes. SDHC cards has a file system that is called FAT32. This only stores files up to 4 gigabytes at a time. So if you record a video of total 8 gigabytes, this will be divided into two files of 4 gigabytes each. Now SDXC cards use a file system that's called XFAT system. And that file system don't have this limitation. And so no matter how big the file is, it will be one file. Write speed that's more interesting than the read speed. Write speed is indicated by the remaining three markings on the card. These three markings are all indications of different speed classes. First, let's take this C shape with a 10 inside. This number indicates the minimum sustained write speed of the card. You have four different kind of classes of minimum sustained write speed. You have two, four, six, and 10, indicating 2 megabytes per second, 4 megabytes per second, 6 megabytes per second, and yes, 10 megabytes per second. On this card, we see that we have a 10 megabytes per second minimum sustained write speed. Like we said, there are 8 bits in one byte. So 10 megabytes per second minimum sustained write speed equals to 80 megabits per second minimum sustained write speed. Nowadays, you won't find SD cards with a lower minimum sustained write speed than 10 megabytes per second. If we shift focus over to the U shape with the number three in it, this is the UHS speed class. You can have cards that says U1 and you can have cards that says U3. This can also tell us the minimum write speed of the card. U1 has a minimum of 10 megabytes per second and U3 has a minimum of 30 megabytes per second write speed. A minimum of 30 megabytes per second multiplied by 8 equals a speed up to 240 megabits per second. Then we have these rumor numbers 1 and 2. We already talked about this in the beginning of the video, but this indicates how many lanes we have to transfer data. UHS-1 have one row of pins to transfer data and UHS-2 has two rows of pins to transfer data. This is called a bus interface. You can think of it as a highway. UHS-1 only has one line of traffic to enter and leave the highway, but UHS-2 has two lines. That means that more traffic can enter and leave the highway at the same time. The last marking we're going to talk about is these V markings. These are referring to a video speed class and are specific for video recording. You can have three different types of V markings, V30, V60 and V90. V30 is found on UHS-1 SD cards, but V60 and V90 are found in UHS-2 cards. V30 indicates a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second, V60 indicates 60 megabytes per second, and V90 indicates 90 megabytes per second. If we multiply this by 8, we get 240 megabits per second, 480 megabits per second, and 720 megabits per second. V30 is good for Full HD or 1080p, V60 is for 4K, and V90 is for high bitrate 4K and up to 8K. But if you're scratching your head right now and wondering, but what if you have a card that says C10, U3, and V90, like this one? What kind of speed classes do you actually have on the card? Well, the answer is the highest number there. So for this card, the minimum sustained write speed is 90 megabytes per second, which is 720 megabits per second. The reason for there being several speed classes on the SD cards is that the SD association that's responsible for naming SD cards 
kept adding new speed clauses. The SD card manufacturers try to include as many speed clauses as they can to make it easier for people to find the right card, but does it actually work though? I personally think having all these speed clauses just adds more confusion, but that's my opinion. Now that we know the meaning of the different markings on the cards, let's take a look at the M6 Mark II and what kind of codex the camera records in. And if you have another camera, just find the manual and look up what kind of file size the different recording modes has. The Canon M6 Mark II, it records video in IPB 8-bit 420. The highest recording quality is 4K in 25 frames per second in PAL mode and 24 or 30 frames per second in NTSC mode. Now, according to the manual, the bit rates in 4K in this camera is approximately 120 megabits per second. The second highest recording quality is 120 frames per second in full HD. This also has a bit rate of approximately 120 megabits per second. To record in 4K with the M6 Mark II, we need a UHS-1 card with a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes per second. That equals to 240 megabits per second. So there's no need for UHS-2 memory card to utilize the highest video quality of the M6 Mark II. So if we don't need the UHS-2 memory card to utilize the video specs of this camera, why did they implement the option to use UHS-2 memory cards? This is because of the raw burst mode with the electronic shutter that fires up to 30 frames per second and it will do so for up to 80 shots in a continuous burst. But this is assuming a fast UHS-2 SD card is installed. With a UHS-1 card you get around 50 or so photos in one burst. And another benefit is that the camera empties the internal buffer into the card faster so you're able to fire again sooner. So which card would you get for your M6 Mark II? I think you will get a long way with the UHS-1 SD card as long as the minimum continued write speed is 30 megabytes per second. I've used UHS-1 cards in the M6 Mark II since I bought it and I've never had any issues or experienced that it's too slow for me to use. But I'll leave this up to you. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. What kind of memory card do you use in your camera? And if you don't use the M6 Mark II, what kind of camera do you actually use? So that's it for this video. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. And since you're down there, consider hitting that subscribe button too, if you haven't done that already. So yeah, maybe I will see you in another video. Bye. Thank you.